Hi guys, following on from the um, film winder fix on, on the Zenit camera. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how you would load a film, set it up for shooting, shoot through a reel of film and rewind in a Zenit 35mm film SLR camera. The principles will be very very similar for many other film SLR cameras. So, first thing we do is we open the back plate and obviously you'll need your roll of film. This is um, just an old expired one so it doesn't matter that I'm going to be exposing that to the light sources because it already has been and is therefore ruined. So, although it should be glaringly obvious do not do what I am about to do in this video with your roll of film or you will ruin it. So anyway, first thing we do, open the back of the camera. For the purposes of this demonstration, the back of the camera will be remaining open. And next thing is push up on this portion here, which locks into the film canister. And what I like to do with these some of, them, some of these take-up spools have slots in that you can feed your film into. This particular one on the Zenit doesn't. What it does have is a little spring clip on here. And what I like to do is feed the film into that first. I'll try and do that so you can see what I'm doing. So hopefully you can see what I've done there. Um, feed the film into that little clip like so and there's a little nub that catches on the holes just there. So take the film canister and draw it across and the film will pull out dropping it into here and you'll see that these these little notches on this winder will hook into the holes on the film. At this point we push this down turning it around until it locks into the canister and then you would perform one winding like so to make sure that it takes up the film accordingly. At this point you'd close the back and then wind it on a couple of times and then you're ready to start shooting your photographs. I'm actually going to leave this open for the purposes of this demonstration and I'm going to fire the shutter like so and then at this point with the back closed you would wind it on once, twice and then you'd get to an unexposed portion of film and you'd be ready to start shooting. You then set your shutter speed and aperture accordingly and you work your way through the film winding and firing. There is a film counter on the Zenit cameras However, it's not a clever electronic one or there's no gadgetry or what have you. It's a basic manual one. So what you do after your initial wind on is you set this, you turn this dial yourself to zero. And there's a little pointer here and a count which goes up to 36 for obvious reasons because your film exposure is coming either 24s or 36s for 35mm film. Set that to zero and then as you wind each one you'll see that it advances one frame at a time. If you need to adjust the shutter speed on your Zenit, you wind on first and then you lift and turn the shutter speed dial to 1 30th, 1 60th, 1 125th, 1 250th, or one five hundredth of a second which is its maximum and then you fire accordingly and I'm just going to turn that back down to the bulb setting on the bulb setting the B for bulb you press and hold and that will keep the shutter curtain open for as long as you press and hold if you then twist your shutter button anti-clockwise it will lock it down and you can let go and that will keep the shutter curtain open for long exposures. Do the same press and hold turn clockwise it will pop back up and the shutter will close. So I'll do that again so you can hear it. Shutter open and remains open. 
shutter closers. This bit here is for your X sync for using a PC um, a PC sync cabled flash from this connector here. Essentially what it does is it moves a brass connector underneath this top cover so that it sends an electrical signal to this which tells the flash to fire. And you would use this if you have an, an on shoe flash or if you had uh, an off camera flash because this is a cold shoe not a hot shoe as explained in my previous video. And then over here you've got your light meter, you would point it at your subject, turn this dial until the little circular bit coincides with your needle and then you read off here because you well you'll have set your film ISO or DIN speed on this dial already here and then you read off the top ring will show you a given aperture so if you know you want to shoot at say 2.8 you would then look to see where you're at and you see 2.8 I can shoot at 1 500th of a second if you want to shoot at f8 1 60th of a second and so on so you you're basically lining one up to the other and you're picking your shutter speed and aperture settings from there do make sure before you go ahead and do that however that uh, the meter is accurate these meters use a selenium cell and um, they typically expire they, they just don't work correctly after 10 to 15 years or so if it still works you're doing very very well if not then there are workarounds but it involves removal of the top plate and replacement of the battery with a different unit and it's not that straightforward but it's not too complicated if you're fairly capable so um, so you continue winding through like so until your film's expired. Your film counter will show where you're at. People who've shot 35mm film before will likely know that you typically get one, possibly two, additional exposures as to what's quoted on here. So a 24 exposure film, even with the first, the first one wound on and then an additional one wound on, you still might get 25 or 26 exposures. That's not to say, however, that your develop, chosen developer will actually give you all of those exposures back. Some of them will just discard the first portion of film, so you might only get 20 to 24 exposures and miss out on a couple, so don't guarantee on that working. Work on the principle that 24 is what you're going to get and you won't be too disappointed. When you've reached the end, it will stop. It will literally just halt. You won't be able to wind any further. At this point, you need to wind the film back into the canister before you open the back so that you don't expose it. I'm going to start this off with the back open, but then I'm going to close it afterwards uh, because what happens is as you're turning this back, it will move this canister here. So you press in this button here. You've got a black button in between these two dials. Press and hold that button. Press down and twist left on that and this little doohickey pops up here and then you turn this counterclockwise and you will see what this button does is it disengages the lock on this um, drive cog here and then this one with the teeth that engage into your film canister wind it back like so. Now one thing I want to show you actually, I'm just going to lock that and just wind that back on again. Something I'm going to show you is uh, a good way of telling that your film is winding on properly with the back closed because you can't see it's completely sealed and light tight um, is when you wind your film on look at the middle the internal dial of this one here and if that rotates like so you can see that it's actually drawing film across your focal plane and it's winding on correctly. So back to winding back the film. So press and hold and then you just wind and wind and wind and wind and wind and wind. And I'm going to cut the video at this point and come back when I've gotten to the end of the winding. You'll feel this release as soon as it springs out of here. If you're really really careful you can stop at that point, pop open the film back and see that you uh, you haven't lost the film inside the canister completely. Uh, to be quite honest, there's not a great deal of use for that unless 
you um, develop your own film um, especially black and white because this makes it easier to actually start feeding the film into your developing drum if you leave it exposed but um, otherwise as you turn this what will most likely happen is you'll be cranking away cranking away cranking away and then the whole thing will just disappear inside the drum like so now if you're taking it to a lab it really doesn't matter because they will they will destroy the case to uh, to get the film out anyway if you're developing at home you can likewise use an opener to pop the lid of the case off or you can actually use a film extractor and I'm going to do a separate little video on using a film extractor so there you go that's that's how to load film in a Zenit E camera uh, how to select your shutter speeds and uh, and how to wind on and rewind your film and I will do a separate video where I show all the component parts and the operation of a Zenit film camera uh, if you are fancying having a go at real analog film photography and if it's first time or if you're fancying getting back into it if it's something that you used to do before hopefully this video has been useful to you keep an eye out for further ones and um, if you enjoyed this please rate comment subscribe give me a thumbs up that would be much appreciated and uh, we will catch you in the next video thanks for watching